All right, in this video, let's go over contained database, something that's brand new to SQL Server 2012. Let's go from the, uh, the current slide. 2012 now has contained databases. Now, what's that mean? It means it'll be much easier to move the database and the users along with it. Let's go take a look at this for a second on um, Management Studio Open. So let's let's connect to any old. How uh, uh, about this one? So previously, if we decided to move this AdventureWorks all right, 2012 database here, and we have users in here and moved them to here, we can't use them with this instance because they're orphaned. All right, what's that mean? Well, the user and login are separate, right? The login, all right, is created here in a sort of a master database. The user is created here. Well, not so with contained databases the information of the user for us to log into this database will be contained within the database and we can move it here and log into it just as we would any other database well all right well sort of all right so uh, 2012 uh, ooh, there's a I'm glad we're not there yet uh, <laughs> this is a little typo only supports partial containment which means objects can be accessed outside the container like many other features it must be enabled so let's go and do that let's create uh, let's clean him up just connect let's add a database here a new database and we'll call this new DB to be as original as possible uh, options containment type partial boink alright well that was pretty straightforward huh So we also create a uh, database with the containment keyword, and uh, you can see we can we also create a, the the database just has the containment keyword in it, right? When we when you craft it, instead of I just did it GUI, all that means is what I was trying to get across is that when we uh, new DB two, and if we were to go to options and we were to type partial containment right and we were to script this out we would see our new keyword here right new database and and where is it it should be maybe at the very last things ah, tried to hide on me containment equals partial all right, there it is. That's what I just wanted to show you, that the, that keyword there in the create statement. So uh, the code is identical to what we're familiar with. Yes, it is when we create a new user. All right, a fully contained database includes all the settings and metadata required to define the database and has no configuration dependencies on that instance all right, where the database is installed. The database becomes its own enti entity not dependent on the master. All right, which is really cool. But now we've got to create a new user, right? So let's go here and let's go to uh, security on the database, new user. And we can see a user, SQL user with password, right? We drop down, we've got a few things we, we can use. We want a SQL user with password. So the username will be Mike and must be strong. And that should do it. So now Mike is part of the new DB, right? Well, that's pretty straightforward stuff. So to connect to it, so we, you know, isn't there always like with some new things, just a little bit of caveats? So here's one. All right. So when we do that, we must specify the database name to connect to the database. So what do I mean by that? Well, I mean if we were to come over here and we just pull up our usual what we're used to as DBAs. Or if you're not new, new, if you're not a DBA and you're not used to this and you're just learning, uh, you will become very familiar with this, this splash here screen because it's what you're going to see a whole lot. All right, so we can't just come down here and type Mike, and we shouldn't be able to. Hold on, and let's see. And log on to. <laughs> okay. Well, I shouldn't have been able to do that. <laughs> All right, let me disconnect from that. All right. <laughs> so let's come here. 
uh, let's go Mike and alright so let's go to options what I want to show you here is that it already filled this out all right it already knew uh, since it was contained database and it, it, it put this containment keyword here uh, that won't be the case usually it will be something else right so when we try to do this you will get this <laughs> it's making a fool out of me isn't it um, I promise you that when you try to log on the first time if you don't change the properties on the options button it'll fail but that's okay so you've, you've got to specify right this to be contained all right and you may have to type it in all right and here I'm just telling you you must specify the database name and the connect here connect to server if you don't SQL server we'll assume it's a traditional SQL login and it will fail all right the contained user doesn't have rights to the master database without first authenticating against the contained database that holds its username and password. All right, that's important. Partially contained databases can be useful during a failover when you use always on availability group and this is the uh, the new um, HADR all right, um, that were the NHA is just a high availability disaster recovery I mean, uh, failover scenario new to 2012 that we're not going to get into, but it's useful because it has its own entity and it can fail over, and the the connection string just will continue to work. All right. Beyond the scope of this slide on contained databases, this video. All right. Maintaining database settings in the database instead of the master database lets each database owner have more control over their database without giving the database owner sysadmin's permission, right? That's important. We, we, you never want to give a developer or anyone, that matter, except for you, uh, sysadmin's permission. And oftentimes you don't want it. Alright, so partially contained databases cannot use replication, change data capture, or change tracking. Alright, so you've got some, well, like with just about everything in Microsoft, there are some uh, things that we can't do. That, and these are actually probably no big deals um, for using our contained databases. All right. So what what we would do now? We have our new DB, and if I had, I'd only have, unfortunately, to show you, I only have one 2012 instance on here, right? Because of space, because this is an SSD drive. I wish I would have installed another instance because we can then just move this. We could back it up. We could restore it to another 2012 instance and connect to it and it would work with no issues. Let's see if I disconnect from this. Will it fail if I just connect to it? Uh, SQL Server. <laughs> Alright, and let's go see if I look at the one of the properties on that. If we go to connect again, let's go to the options. Yeah, see. Alright. It is uh, it knows that we're using contained databases. That's cool. All right, so just know that that's here. That you will have to, uh, when you create this, all right, it, it won't remember this, um, like like what it's doing right now. All right, so you will have to do this yourself. All right, and and you will know when you set up your first contained databases, and you go to connect, and this doesn't work. You'll be like, ah, oh, so we need to go to the options to the properties here. And type in, all right, our connection properties, and that's it for contained databases.